Welcome to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. I'm Catherine Raymock. And I'm Jen Walker-Wood. And we're a show all about the modern entrepreneur. Each week we get a chance to interview two company founders. And first, before we tell you who we have on today, we do want to start by thanking our sponsor, Impact Hub Santa Barbara. And so right now there is a special promotion. If you're listening and you mention Cowork Radio, you get 10% off the first six months. Highly recommend you go in and take a tour. Eric Onan is with us today. He is the founder and CEO of Santa Barbara Airbus, which provides 16 daily round trips to LAX. Also, they have charter services and mini limo buses. Yeah, and the uh, origin of that, he'll tell you, was uh, in Canada many years ago. They're celebrating 34 years. Pia Dore is here as well. She is the founder of Orange Identity and an international marketing and branding company with offices in Santa Barbara. And Australia. But first, we want to start with some interesting business news today. Yeah, well, it turns out people are talking instead of typing. According to a new report by Invoca, which is actually a Santa Barbara company, uh, voice assistant usage is expected to grow by 130% this year. And there are now 45 million voice-assisted devices in U.S. homes. So does that mean eventually people won't have to type at all, do you think? Well, Um, yeah, you just talk. Now, do you have a voice-assisted you know, device I, in your home? For some reason, I, I'm probably one of the holdouts. Well, I don't but, have you know, one either. I That's don't. why I'm surprised that it's $45 million. Yeah, No, I, I find them... Alexa, little... put one in Catherine's <laughs> house. <laughs> I find them a little odd, and I don't know why, and I'd probably really like... One of the uh, report that I read recently said that they're putting them in dressing rooms in some places. Um, I know you're giving me that look, but I, it entertains people while they're shopping. The sound and, of the bra coming it off. It is just... I don't know. I don't like it. Uh, I don't know what direction we're going okay. today. All right. Um, now, I don't know if you read about Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday, huge numbers for Cyber Monday. An increase of 16.8% over last year. That is huge. Cyber Monday racking up $6.59 billion. And the strongest purchases between 8 p.m. and 11 a.m. Amazon got the biggest chunk of that, 42 42 Two percent of the sales were Amazon, and I just thought I'd throw this in there. I didn't. I did not know this, but Cyber Monday. Do you know how that was coined? Uh, it was actually back in 2015 when Ellen Davis of the National Retail Federation came up with the term. Other suggestions: Blue Monday. They were thinking about of the color of web links, or Green Monday for the money that was being made. But she liked Cyber Monday, and so it's oh. Well. Good for her. Did you buy anything on Cyber Monday? No, I didn't. I didn't. Probably something online, but no. I I was recovering after Thanksgiving. (laughs) I I read a story about uh, great travel deals, so I got on. And as you know, my brother lives in Mexico. I found uh, a a flight. This was a two-way flight to San Miguel de Allende for $150. My God, that's amazing. Never seen it. Of course, taxes and everything else on top of that made it. Oh, wow, that. that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Do you know there are seven, oh, sorry, 6,700 retail stores closed this year, 2017, which is triple the number of 2016. And almost 60% of shoppers plan to shop online this year. And that's according to the National Retail Foundation. And this makes the first time that online is the more popular choice for shoppers. I know what do you think is going to happen with the old-fashioned retail store? Do you see them just completely going out of business? Well, or? I think they've got to become experiences. And some of them will remain because, you, like for makeup, Sephora is doing great because you have to try on makeup things. Things where you have to go in. I've also read that um, those kind of retailers aren't offering the kind of sales that that online places do either. It's hard for them to stay competitive. And you go in there sometimes and they don't have the size you want and... uh... Yeah, it is a or the selection of convenience online. thing. Speaking of shopping, if you're planning your Christmas shopping, um, well, uh, you hope you have about a thousand dollars to play with. Americans will spend this year on gifts. They say an average of six hundred nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars this holiday uh, season, and uh, hopefully that doesn't stress you out too much. But if it does, you're not alone. Seventy percent of Americans actually feel that Christmas is too focused on spending. Ah. Oh. I think it's too close to Thanksgiving. You know my opinion on that. In Canada, 
Thanksgiving is second week of October, which gives you more time to get used to the idea of seeing your relatives again. Uh, Businesses that embrace (laughs) co-working can cut costs by 25%, according to one Australian study. And that's compared to the cost, comparing the cost of traditional commercial leasing to co-working. And in Australia, over the last three years, co-working has grown 300%. And we're going to continue to see that trend, I know. Um, How about renting? If you are looking to rent, you better make sure that you've got a great credit score, or not great credit. Actually, these aren't great credit scores, but the credit score for the typical renter is going up. So if uh, if you want to be approved renters, the uh, renter rate, uh, 638 in 2014, up to 650 this year. Now, the high end of the tenants, 683. I wouldn't think that you would think of a tenant if they had a below 700 credit rating, but there you go. Well, I think a lot of people don't know that you can make your credit rating better by doing certain things, like paying off all your credit cards before you uh, do the run. Oh, okay. So I paying them all off, because I've heard various things. Well, they want, people... they want someone who has used a lot of credit in the past, mm-hmm. but they don't want any credit balances. They ding you if you have any credit balances. Okay. I won't run your credit score, and I'm sure it's good. (laughs) (laughs) And we are uh, going to be back after the break. We're going to be talking with Eric Onan and uh, also his daughter, Samantha, who has just come into the family business as well. Right after the break, we will be here with UCSB professor and also prolific business author John Greathouse. He's going to be here to answer your question. It might be yours if you sent one in. You are listening to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. You can follow us on social media, and we will be right back. Koto Group. We are a boutique property management firm located here in the Central Coast. We are small enough to prioritize your business and large enough to match the right tenants with your property. Koto Group. We work for you 24-7 with around-the-clock marketing and emergency service. At Koto Group, we use leading-edge software, making us efficient and cost-effective. Koto Group. Property management for the 21st century. Hi, it's Catherine Raymock. Are you buying or selling a home? See Compass Realtor Terry Riken. I went to Terry because of his reputation and experience, but was quickly taken by his genuine enthusiasm. It's that combination that truly sets him apart. Terry specializes in properties in Montecito, Hope Ranch, Santa Barbara, and San Inez Valley, and has 39 years of experience as an agent and broker. There are so many realtors to choose from, but only one Terry Riken. Find out for yourself. Google search Terry Riken. Hi, I'm Dan Farrick, Managing Director of the Impact Hub Santa Barbara. Come visit us and find out why co-working spaces are booming. Our two locations in the Funk Zone and downtown Santa Barbara offer private offices, permanent desks, and a variety of co-working memberships starting as low as $60 a month. Mention Cowork Radio when you book our tour, and we'll give you 10% off your first six months of membership. Join a community where you can live and work smart. Go to impacthubsb.com or call 284 284- 0078 to find out more. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to your local realtor. I'm here with talent on loan from the California Department of Real Estate. Mark Schneidman's Radio Real Estate, live Monday mornings at 11, rebroadcast Monday evenings at 9, and Saturday afternoons at 2. Try to fit in some motoring with Mark. Fourth segment, of course, is the weekly multiple listing sales update. Oh, and also something about your credit score, understanding your credit score. Stay tuned. I'll be back next time at this time for another edition of Mark Schneidman's Radio Real Estate. That's what I have to say. Thanks for listening and listing. Just remember, I can answer just about any question eventually. Welcome back to Cowork Radio. I'm Catherine Raymock. And I'm Jane Walker-Wood. And we are here as we are every week with venture capitalist, UCSB professor, business author, John Greathouse. You can send your questions to askjohn at coworkradio.com. Always good to see you. How you doing, John? Hey there. Hi, John. We got an email from Xavier who heard your answer last week about growth hacking. Mm-hmm. 
And he wants to know, is that the same as a hackathon? And if not, what's the difference? Ooh, I think in my answer last week, I mentioned something about a hackathon in my answer about growth hacking. So that's probably where the confusion came from. No, the, I think the only similarity is they both have the word hack in them. <laughs> <laughs> um, although you, I guess there are some others um, in the sense that some uh, hackathon, growth hacking can involve brainstorming and that's a related to hackathons. So hackathons, I think I feel like I said this for the last couple of weeks when I answer questions, comes in a variety of flavors. And it's a term that one company will use it one way and it means something totally different to someone else. Um, I'll talk about a couple of flavors. So some hackathons are, are sponsored internally by companies. So um, I know I participated in um, Graphic was a company that Amazon recently acquired, Kevin O'Connor's startup. I participated as a judge, the most unqualified judge ever for a hackathon, but I, I participated as a judge one of their hackathons, and what they had done is they gave um, – either it could be an individual or a group of employees – time within their workday to w- work on a problem that was important to the company or that they thought was important to the company and present it. And it's really – it's wonderful. They present it to a whole – a large group of employees, um, and then there were some prizes and notoriety and recognition. But it's a chance for uh, individuals at a company to, to, to maybe think a little bit. Um, outside of their normal workflow, Google's famous for this for the you know the fifth day a week where you can work on any project you want to. It's just more formalizing that 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 twenty percent of your time you can do whatever you want. It's not quite that, but it's like for this weekend or for these three days during the week. But you, the one caveat is you have to come back and present what you found. So there's a lot of pressure to come up with something meaningful. That is amazingly yeah. forward thinking yeah. for companies, yeah, and especially with millennials. I think these days who really right. want to do something that has that kind of meaning and don't want a traditional work day anyway. But right. yeah. Yeah. I had to look up yeah. to see what it meant. <laughs> and there's a group called Major League Hacking. Mm-hmm. And they are sponsoring 28 of them just in October. And they seem to mostly be university-based. They, they can be university-based. They can also be community-based. Mm-hmm. So we're here in Santa Barbara. We have hackathons. And those are great networking events. So I've talked to entrepreneurs that aren't technical. And they say, oh, I don't want to go to hackathon because I don't write code. That's where you should go because those are the people that you could team up with to help make your idea happen. Um, so oftentimes you'll see sort of games is maybe too loose of a word. But – um, competitions, there'll be themes. So what, I'll give you a for instance. So maybe we all get together like every Thursday and it's 15, 20 of us. And maybe one of the weeks we get together, um, we come up with a list of apps, uh, brainstorm apps. And then we come up with them and then we say, let's write, let's write code to create one of these apps. And we pick an app or maybe we pick three of them. And then everyone just sort of works on their own code. They collaborate, they help each other. It could be um, some one night we might say, Listen, I'm a front-end developer, I, you know, I, which means I use certain types of, of, of language, software languages. Um, I'm going to write back-end infrastructure code today. And, I'm, and so the people that know how to write back-end infrastructure code will help them, and the back-end infrastructure people will write front-end code. So they're not doing it to become necessarily to change their career and all of a sudden start going from writing – code for user interfaces to writing databases, but just having that understanding of becoming more facile in the whole stack as opposed to only knowing you know, the front end or the back end. Now, is that a hackathon, what you're describing, or is that a multitude of hackathons? Because the ones I was reading about, they're generally 36 hours. So that's... You do get to sleep. It's not like the dance-a-thons of the... So that's another flavor. So that's oh, okay. almost like the startup weekend type hackathon where um, you're... So what I just mentioned is more like the club hackathon. So it's a you know it just happens every month, and everybody gets together and have pizza and beer. Um, you can also have the startup weekend style hackathon where on Friday you get up and you maybe you pitch your idea. You try to get a team to come around you. You write code all weekend, and then on Sunday, and it is in some cases almost without without stop. And then on Sunday, sometimes you have judges, and it's not judged. It's just a judge by the peers. You present your code and you present how you solve the problem. John, how does somebody protect their idea when you're bringing it into a forum like that and spinning so many thoughts? And is it important that that you do no. have it protected before you go into no. something? No, no. And I and it's a good question, and and I get it a lot from entrepreneurs. But you really, it's the idea itself is not worth very much. You're probably not going to walk in with an idea that's that in and of itself is that valuable it's the execution behind that idea yeah so i wouldn't be too worried about it now if you're if you're you know if you're working with molecular structures or material science there's certainly areas of expertise where yes you want to lock down your intellectual property you don't want to stand up in front of people and talk about it but for software software creation is hard to protect 
via intellectual property anyway. And these hackathons typically involve creating software. So I would say don't be so worried about that. I will let me talk let me tell a quick story about one of these hackathons slash startup weekends. So these two gentlemen had never met. They were I think they were in Kansas City and they met on a Friday. They both 